What's up guys? Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch the video today. Um, today we are reviewing the PSE Fortis 33. So this is the new aluminum bow from PSE. They launched it at ATA um, in the middle of January or second week of January. Um, I had actually got a chance to shoot it from one of their staff shooters that came by the shop uh, before then. And I was really, really impressed with it. Um, took us a couple weeks, almost a month to get these in um, when we, after we placed our order. So I know a few people have had these already and have, you know, there might be some reviews out there, uh, but hopefully I can give you guys some info that you may not know. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm just really impressed with this bow. Um, I think PSE, you know, in the last couple of years has really started to kind of build probably some of the best bows they have in, I don't know how long, a long time. So uh, starting with the technical spec. So 33 inches axle to axle. Uh, this is the EC2 cam. So it's basically the Evolve cam. Um, if you're familiar with like, you know, the EVL had the Evolve cam, um, it's been an option that you can get on a lot of their bows. Uh, there was the EC and the SE. Now it's just the EC2 cam. Uh, you can get this bow in the S2 and the E2, but in terms of draw length range, um, and then just overall shootability, I think this EC2 cam is really, it's in my opinion, it's the best shooting of the three. Uh, this will go from 26 to 31 and a half inches, or excuse me, uh, 26 and a half to 31 and a half inches. Um, so that's going to fit 90% of the people out there. Um, the SE cam is going to, I think that max is at 29 inches and then the E2 will go all the way out to like 32 and a half inches. Uh, it has, so it, it IBOs at 334, but it has just over seven inch brace height. It's a 7.125 inch brace height. Uh, so you get a lot of forgiveness with that. Um, you can see the reflex in the riser is pretty minimal. This bow really reminds me, um, feel-wise, of my EVL 34, which if you followed me, you know that I really, really like that bow. I still have it set up and shoot it pretty pretty often. Um, the difference with the EC2 cam from the Evolve cam is essentially they widened, they had to widen that cam with this new spacer system. So if you're familiar in the past with PSEs, especially if you've had to tune one, uh, you know that they've always had a shim system, but it was not just two different size spacers. It was like, you know, a thick one with two really thin ones on one side and, and two or three really thin ones on the other side. And if you had to shim the cam, it was a, a huge process. You had to put the bow on the press, take the strings off, uh, relax the limbs, pull the limbs out of the limb pocket, take the axles out, uh, swap the shims. It, it, what should have taken you two minutes took you 15 minutes. Um, with this new, they call it the Easy 220 system. It's kind of hard to see in here, uh, but there are these little shims in there and they have different numbers on them. And the reason they call it the 220 is whichever size you have of thick and thin, they're, they're all numbered and it has to add up to 220. So that's gonna make sure that the, the width between, you know, the space between the limb is the same. Um, so, as, you know, you can have any combination of the spacers as long as they add up to 20. You do not need to pull the axles to do it. There's actually, they're on a little clip and they make a little tool that you put in there and just pop these out. Um, you do need to press the bow in order to do it. You might be able to do it without, um, but generally you relax that limb a little bit and the, the tension on the, the clips relieves a little bit and makes it much easier to get off. Uh, they do have a bolt-in axle this year versus the C-clips. I prefer a bolt-in axle personally because I can't tell you how many guys I see that come in and one of their C-clips has fallen off at some point, which, you know, I've never seen an axle come all the way out with the C-clip because there, there's so much pressure on it, but it's just not a good thing. If that axle's shifting and that limb widens out a little bit, now you've got slop in your cam. So with the bolt-in axle and that shim system, you got a really, really solid uh, pocket here. You still have their nice wide limb pocket here, all machined aluminum, very stable platform. There's not a lot of torque induced at full draw with this cam system and this, this riser and limb, uh, limb configuration. The... Uh, like the cams in the past, you know, this is the high let off mod. So with this little piece here, I can make it, I have it set on 85. You can do 90, 85 or 80%. Most people, if they're pulling 70 pounds and up are going to shoot the 85%. Um, the holding weight wise, you know, it comes out in that 10, 11, 12 pound range, just depending if you're 70, 72, 75. Uh, you can get this in a 50, 60, 70 and 80 pound peak weight from PSE. This is a 70. It's making 70.2 pounds right now from the factory. A um, couple other features they've done. So they went to the pick rail mount. So just like Hoyt has done, um, this 
if you need to mount the sight to the side of the bow, like a traditional mount, you do need to take this off because it is slightly wider than the riser, so your sight won't sit flush against the riser. Um, but you've got a couple different positions, high and low, that you can mount that in. Um, so depending on, you know, if you have a really tall pee pipe or something, your sight's maxed out, even when you're on the top rail here, you can move the whole rail up and alleviate that. Um, it also has, and it's hard to see because there's a stupid whisker biscuit on here, but it has the, the core system, um, which essentially, it'll accept an integrated QAD, but there's also, they tapped the riser there. So for the Hamski, um, Hamski has a new rest. It's still the Epsilon, but it's got a little plate that actually screws onto the back here. And then the, the clamp on the Hamski goes right onto that. So there's no mount on the side of your bow. Doesn't hold it any closer really, like, but it's just it just looks really streamlined and is going to save you a couple ounces from you know the the weight of the uh, mounting bracket so lots of cool features there one thing that i'm so glad they finally did is they totally revamped this grip so it is still a rubberized grip but it's actually instead of going over the riser it's actually inlaid into this slightly so it's the exact same width as the riser it's much narrower um, you can take this off if you want and still just wrap the bare riser it's going to feel very similar to uh to the grips of, on pses in the past if you pulled that rubber off but it's really really comfortable it's got a little bit of texture here so it's not going to get slippery um it kind of reminds me of like a hoyt grip without the ergonomics if that makes sense just like the, the feel it has um i think it's an extremely comfortable bow i shot this bow at the ata show uh and i was really really impressed um you know obviously you have your, your mounting holes here for quivers so you can run a multitude of different quivers. I know PSE makes one. I'm a little surprised they haven't come out with like a high-end one like Hoyt and Matthews have that'll, that sucks up really tight to the bow. Um, but you can run a tight spot. You can run, you know, the two-piece tight spot, which that you can get incredibly close to the bow as well. So it's got all the options that pretty much all the other major flagship bows do this year in terms of, you know, the pick rail, um, that integrated system, so to speak. So definitely a really, really cool bow. I think I mentioned that this cam comes in at 334 feet a second. So I'm expecting this bow to shoot pretty close to like all the other bows that are rated uh, at that. Um, like that, oh, the VTM 34, that was like 272 feet a second with a 525 grain arrow. The, uh, the SS 34 that I reviewed last week was it's actually rated three feet a second slower, but it shot literally the same speeds as the VTM 34. This has a higher brace height than both of them. Uh, and is supposed to shoot the same speed. So I'm kind of curious to see what it does there. They do come in a variety of colors. This obviously is the tan. Uh, we pretty much just roll solid colors now. Never fails when you buy camo bows, you know, people, you, you get subalpine and they want Kuyu or you get Kuyu and they want, you know, first light or whatever. So we pretty much just roll solid colors. They're a lot more popular anyway. So we got this, the charcoal, the black, and they're like OD green. Um, I think it's a good looking bow. Um, holds really well on target. Like I said, it reminds me of my EVL. Um, I've, I got a chance to shoot it quite a bit and, uh, so far I'm really impressed. So we're going to do the usual speed test today. Um, multitude of arrow weights along with a 30 and a 28 inch draw length. So I'm going to quit yakking, get the chronograph set up here and we'll, uh, see what this thing can do. All right. So we've got the chrono set up here. Um, again, this is 30 inches, 70 pounds. This is a right-handed bow. Uh, but because the brace height is big enough, I can actually shoot this left-handed. So uh, 70 pounds, 30 inch draw length, 85% uh, let off. And again, this is the EC2 cam. So first arrow, 525 grains. Draws so nice. Draws really, really smooth. 266. So that's a little bit slower than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, I was thinking we were gonna get up into that, you know, two, 275 range. Okay, this is the 470 grain arrow. <laughs> 281, that's a pretty big jump. Um, didn't like, didn't like that, uh, Heavy arrow. Um, okay, this is 430 grain arrow. Got a really nice draw cycle. 
291. This is a, oh, I don't need that. This is a 380 grain arrow. Ooh, it's short. 311, so that's pretty dang quick. I'm actually gonna shoot that 525 again and see if maybe I just shot it through the chrono weird. Okay, 525. Last time it said 266, but it was a little low through the chrono, I think. So let's see what this one does. Man, that brow's nice. Two sixty seven. So didn't like that real heavy arrow. If you're gonna shoot this, I'd probably shoot an arrow in that. You know, I mean that's not slow, but it's slower than the other bows rated at the same. So I'm gonna set this to twenty eight inches, and we're gonna do that exact same test and uh, see what the results are. All right, we got this set to twenty eight inches here. Um, one thing that I did not mention in the original spec thing was they did add this little nubbin as well as uh limb dampeners um so this kind of like the hoyt keeps that center of gravity low it's got vibration absorption in there and then with this uh, i think it does a really good job like this bow compared to the xf33 last year's model um there is a noticeable difference in vibration it's, it's really really crisp um barely any residual vibration it's just a sweet shooting bow um so anyway 28 inches, 70 pounds. This arrow is 525 grains. Two forty-three. Uh, this is 470 grains. that arrow 260 so pretty crazy I mean I mean that, that's a decent you know jump in weight it's 55 grains but um, it seems to like that you know that 470 480 grain arrow a lot more than 525 um, that's a that's a big jump to go to you know almost almost 20 feet a second with you know whatever 55 grains that's that's a pretty big jump um, all right so this is a 430 grain arrow 274 and then this is the little speed demon 380 grains Two eighty four, so it <laughs> jumps like eleven feet a second for every every arrow. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, really close to every other bow in that spec range. Um, like I said, the S two KM is going to give you a little bit more speed. It is a noticeably stiffer draw cycle, though. I think this, you know, I'll, I will happily sacrifice six feet a second for a shootable bow and a bow that I don't get tired of shooting. Um, just a just a really cool bow. I. You know, I think this is going to be a really popular one. We've had a lot of questions about them in the last last couple weeks. Um, so I'm glad we got them in. People are going to come start shooting them. And uh, I encourage you to do the same. Uh, if you're in the Oregon, Washington area, swing by the shop. we got plenty of these for you to try. Um, or at least one for you to try. Plenty for you to buy. Um, if you're not local here, head down to your local PSD, PSE dealer. Uh, get your hands on one of these bad boys and see if you like it. Um, they do make it in a 30 inch model as well. We did not order any of the order any of those. Um, seems like most of the guys in this area, you know, are kind of gravitating towards that longer bow stuff in that like 32 to 34 inch range. So this fits the bill, uh, but I'm, I'm impressed with it. It's smooth. It's quiet. It's decently fast. Um, and yeah, it's just, just a shooter. Got lots of cool features. So thanks for watching today today, man, I cannot talk right now. <laughs> Um, remember that precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle and I'll see you on the range.